Um, hi everybody. Uh, I hope you're doing well. So um, I'm going to share my interview experience with Google. So it was my first time giving uh, an interview with Google and uh, the position was software developer early campus. So in this video, I'll share my interview experience. I will divide the video into stages where each stage denotes like uh, sub application submitted, technical interviews, uh, HR round interviews, all the way till the decision. So I'll break down into stages before I begin. Quick fact, you can only interview uh, for a position at Google three times in your life. So if you don't make it in the first go, uh, you have one more chance. If you don't make it in the second go, you have your last chance. And if you do not make it in the third go, then I'm sorry. So that's how Google is. Uh, and then in this life, well, at least in this life, you cannot work at Google anymore if you don't make it in three rounds. So that was a quick fact. So stage one, uh, me submitting the application. So in the month of August 2024, I submitted my application. I saw the uh, position pop up on LinkedIn and then I just quickly applied. And then um, I will make a video of my resume that got shortlisted because I think it's a pretty big deal that uh, I got my resume shortlisted for an interview with Google. It is a pretty big deal. So I'll make another video for that. Um, Quick tips over here during application process. Be an early applicant. Uh, the next tip I would say is like luck. You know, the time of the year when you apply. For example, when you apply for jobs in the month of December, right? That time hiring is a bit slow due to the holiday period. So things like that. So stage one complete. Stage two. Um, I got advanced to the stage two. Basically, the recruiter saw my resume, shortlisted my resume, and moved me forward into the coding round. So this is basically an online coding assessment. Um, however, this coding assessment is a two part thing. The first thing is called as a snapshot survey where you need to answer questions based on your personality. And the second part is the coding exercise in itself. So um, I had once again, I had submitted my application somewhere in August and I got the next round on 10th September 2024. So like two, three weeks later. So that's what happened. And um, now let me talk about the snapshot survey. It's a personality based questions. They ask questions like uh, what kind of person are you? And then you need to like weigh your options. It's very simple, very intuitive. It takes just 15 minutes. Just be honest in that. And the hard and crazy part is, of course, the coding exercise. So you'll be given 90 minutes and two questions. And what, what you need to do is you need to basically um, answer both the coding questions and you need to make sure to pass all the test cases for them as well. So that's the hard part and uh, the questions are like hard. It's like medium hard level. I do not remember the questions. It was like three, four months ago and uh, I cleared them. I was able to clear all the test cases as well um, and that helped me move to the next round, which is basically stage three. So that's about stage two snapshot surveys and coding questions. And uh, tips, of course, for snapshot service, just answer honestly. It's about who you are. That's very important. And the for the coding exercises, lead code. So at the end of the day, uh, just do lead code and then you'll be able to solve those crazy questions. And let's move ahead with stage three. So uh, stage three was on September 26th, where I got an email from the recruiter saying that we would like to start scheduling interviews with you because you have cleared the survey survey snapshot, which is a personality exam and the coding exam as well. So that was again good news. And um, what happened was in that email, the recruiter basically said that, hey, here is link to my Google calendar. Please open the Google calendar and uh, schedule and book a meeting basically. So I had to like go through the calendar and book a meeting. I saw that email like two hours later, I didn't have access to my phone. And by the time I opened that link, all the slots were like for the next week, next to next week were like completely booked. So um, my interview with the HR for the HR round, which is stage three, got scheduled at uh, August 21st. So I got an email from HR move for moving ahead with next round on September 26th and then uh, when I actually got a call on to, with the recruiter, it was on October 21st. So you see that one month and then I had to wait for one month for that call to take place. And it was a basic call. Okay, the HR just wanted to gauge um, 
how good I am technical wise and how soon I can give an interview. So these were the questions that the recruiter asked me on October 21st, 2024. Why do you want to work at Google? Your preferred programming language, uh, your strengths and weaknesses. What's your availability like for technical interviews? Rate yourself in DSA coding and algorithms. Explain explanation of what the next rounds might look like. So HR basically gave all this and uh, the preferred programming language part. So if you say a preferred programming language is Java or Python, then during the technical interview, during the technical interviews, you would have to basically code down the entire solution in Java or Python like that. So I love Java more than Python. I'm sorry, Python lovers. Uh, so I had to give my solutions in Java during the actual interview. So that was October 21st, a call with the recruiter. Now, quick tips over here. When you receive this email, please uh, book the appointment immediately because I delayed it. I got a late phone interview, literally one month later. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, that was the tip basically. And then uh, stage four, invitation for on-site interview. So this is where the interviews start kicking into the picture. So there are basically four back-to-back -back interviews that will take place. And uh, my interview date was scheduled on 22nd November. So October 21st and then November 22nd. Again, one month later were my technical interviews. So that means I had just one month to prepare, uh, you know, like grind lead code more uh, so that I can do well in the interview at least. So on November 22nd, uh, I had given four. Uh, so there are like four back to back interviews with Google. Um, 10 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. 11 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. 1 p.m. to 1.45 p.m. 2 p.m. to 2.45 p.m. So these are the four questions. It gets crazy now. And um, it's basically it's called like, it's like a super day. Goldman Sachs has the same thing. It's a super day. And it's not like if you did bad in the first interview, you would not go go into the second or if you did bad in the second, you won't go into the third. You will give all four interviews regardless of your performance. However, in Goldman Sachs, it, it's not like that. Um, and um, so, yeah, uh, so basically I my interview date was November 22nd and I had one month to prepare. A quick tip over here. Uh, actually, my interview was earlier. It was somewhere in November 2nd week. I reached out to the recruiter saying, please give me one more week. I want to prepare better. And then the recruiter agreed and pushed my interview a week later. So that's what happened. Um, and so again, before interview, what did I do? One month, I went crazy. I just kept doing uh, neat code. And there's this neat code 75 list. I did that. And uh, I went through previous interview questions on Glassdoor. And then I went through some experiences on Reddit. It was it was crazy. I went like I tried to pull four hours during work days and on weekends I tried to pull like eight hours, eight to ten hours. I just kept sitting and doing that. So it was crazy. Um, I grinded lead code. Um, there were times where I felt like punching the laptop because I was getting like really stressed out. Other times when I when I was able to solve medium level questions, I was like very happy. So balance, that's how life is. And then now moving ahead uh, on the day of interview. So on the day of interview, um, I prior to the interview, I had to sign an NDA. So because I signed the NDA, I cannot share the actual questions, interview questions, but I can give the generic topic, right? So that's fine. So four interviews and in the first interview is not technical. It's more project experience uh, outcome related. So what like the projects you worked on, experiences on that and how you handle certain scenarios, situations in a workplace setting. Again, it's personality driven. It's uh, it's non technical interview and it it's a piece of cake. It's all right. Second interview is the technical interview. So obviously I cannot share what the interview question was. Uh, but it was a graph question, so that's all I can say. So second interview was a graph question. During the interview, I was not able to um, understand that it was a graph question, which is bad news. And um, I solved it like it's any other. Uh, I just thought of it and I brute force. I solved it. And then after the interview got over, it just hit me that it was a graph question. So that's what happened. And then in the third interview, 
So third interview was also, it was easier. Basically there was an existing piece of code and I had to make it more efficient. So I can, yeah, so basically it was that. I cannot get into specifics here, but that was the third interview and tick mark that went very well. Uh, last was the fourth interview, the toughest of all. And you can actually feel the intensity of the interview going up and up. The fourth interview was again a graph question. And um, by the time I reached, uh, by the time 45 minutes got over, um, you know, I wasn't able to come up with a solution. Um, I, at the end, I was able to come up with the recursive solution for that graph problem again. But uh, yeah, that's how it went. So um, like, Basically, the first and third interviews went well. Second, I realized it was a graph problem much later. And in the fourth one, uh, I was able to find the recursive solution, but I it was like kind of brute force. I wasn't able to uh, handle it. And between interviews, uh, like your emotional state gets crazy. My palms were sweaty um, and I remember my hands were shaking. And again, it's again life part of the process and you just go crazy. You just have to always keep drinking water next to you and you need to keep sipping on water. So that was that. So interview experience wise, interviews were very nice. They were helpful and they were like ready to provide guidance and stuff. And um, sometimes like they would not give you the solution straight away. You have to you have to communicate. So that's the tip I want to share. Keep talking. Don't stay quiet. Uh, you need to communicate. When the question comes up, you just have to keep communicating and then the uh, interviewer will be able to guide you at least. If you stay quiet and if you keep thinking on thinking in your head and trying to come up with solution, it's it's not good. Uh, be very time efficient. Uh, on the fourth interview, the interviewer at the beginning asked me a simple question in, in the fourth interview, like it was project related question. And I just I just got carried away with the answer because it was a project I loved working on. And then I think I answered for like five minutes and then already you're in that time crunch of 45 minutes and then my five minutes spent right there. And so be very time efficient. Um, keep water next to you. Uh, respect the interviewer's time box as well. So so the interviewers, you should respect their time as well, right? Which is 45 minutes. I remember uh, in my fourth interview, when 45 minutes got over, I was like, uh, hi, could you please give me just five, 10 minutes more? I feel like I'm very close to the answer. And then uh, and then he, he didn't get upset. Uh, the, the interview didn't get upset, but they were like, um, I'm sorry, but we are also on, in a time box over here. We are not allowed to continue. So thank you so much. And I was like, yeah, I understand. So uh, again, studying tips over here, lead code, need code, grind, 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 and just go crazy with it. That's all. And then stage five, which is the result day, uh, I got my result on December 21st and I was rejected, of course. So, and they also did not give any interview feedback. So um, that's what it is. They will not tell you what went well, what did not go well. So that's again, part of how Google's interview is. I've heard even Amazon does the same thing. They do not give you uh, the feedback. So yeah, basically it started in August and December 21st, which is about a week ago, I got rejected. So it's all right, part of life. Uh, to move on and do great things in life. It's all right. And lastly, um, in my feedback, uh, the interviewer, like they scheduled a call and told, like, we are sorry, we won't be moving forward with your application. They told me that for this position, software developer early campus, I will not be allowed to interview for this position for a year. So that's the constraint that's put up on my application. Um, so I spoke to a friend who, and she also had given the same uh, the interview for Google the same position and for her it was only six months so she could not interview for this position for six months so I assume her uh, experience went maybe she did better than me and then she got um, she got the lesser time frame but I can uh, like apply for other positions at Google and interview for them but for the specific position software developer early campus I cannot so that's that's the other thing. So yeah, yeah, folks, that was my uh, interview experience um, and I did not crack Google and uh, yeah, that's about it. So let's see where life takes us. Uh, thank you and have a nice day.